Yay Networks. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to In the Cards and Stars. I'm your host, Britt Madrid Mogensen. And in this episode, we're going to lament about Saturn. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Saturn has been in Aquarius for the past three years, you guys. And if you have any major Aquarius placements, you have any friends who have those placements, God forbid you're married to or dating someone with those placements, then you know the past three years have been transformative to say the least. Just all, all these shifts are happening collectively for us individually. So we're going to talk about what that means. And we're just going to have a little bit of fun talk about what's been going on for us. So let's get into it. Saturn, the big disciplinarian of the Zodiac. Energy that comes in when you're having a good time, maybe you're goofing off, but you're just like kind of carefree. Well, Saturn comes in and it's like, knock, knock, you have responsibilities. There are things that you need to do. You forgot to pay your bills. Da, 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 da. So it's kind of like this energy that's honestly annoying, right? Like nobody wants to be told what to do. Nobody wants to have to buckle down or deal with the hardships sometimes that can trigger that urge to buckle down. But at the end of the day, nothing is more helpful when it comes to growing into the person that we all want to become than Saturn giving us that guidance and that loving discipline. It's like a coach, you know? So Saturn is always somewhere in the sky, right? So it's always somewhere in your birth chart, no matter what your big three are, like your major placements. So if you pull up your birth chart, which I highly encourage you to do this because it's probably going to make you laugh and you're going to shake your head and be like, that's what's been going on for me. Um, I feel like when I tell people about these transits, if they are on the fence about astrology, they usually hop that fence into becoming like a total believer once they look at their birth chart and see like, okay, this is exactly what's been going on for me. So, okay, if you pull up your birth chart and look at where Saturn is, let's use Selena Gomez's birth chart for an example because that's fun. So for Selena Gomez, she has Saturn in the seventh house. Her seventh house starts at Aquarius. So basically that information just tells us that this Saturn in Aquarius transit for the past three years has been affecting her directly in her seventh house of partnerships. So all you have to do is look at the house, look at the sign. Once you have that info, find Saturn, you're gonna know all about what's going on for you. So, okay, for her, this just basically means that she has been feeling this transformative grow up energy in her house of partnerships. And that's all kinds of partnerships. That's business relationships. That's romantic relationships. I had no idea that she was going through this Saturn return in her 7,000 partnership. So it makes sense why everyone's so interested because intuitively we kind of know, like we've seen it. She's been single. She's talked openly about wanting to be single and just focusing on her work. And that's an amazing thing. But to me, that says, wow, she's like, she's growing up. She's getting serious about what she wants in relationships and in partnerships. She's not just going to be dating a bunch of people. And a lot of the time that is what happens, that energy of like kind of growing up or getting serious that's what happens before we attract like the right partner or the right one. So that's another thing I want to tell you guys about Saturn. Wherever Saturn is in your birth chart, I'm going to use myself as an example now. I have uh, my first house starts in Aquarius. So this Saturn in Aquarius transit has been affecting me in my first house. That's the house of self. That's like me, my beliefs, like what, like it, it's basically like my entire identity. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, yeah, I feel that. So what happens with a Saturn transit is it takes that part of your life and it's like, okay, um, we need to tear this down and get you to question everything because once this transit's over, once Saturn has coached you for three years or however long it's going to be in that sign, you learn something that's going to be really valuable that takes you to the next step. And a lot of the time Saturn will leave you a reward. Astrologers call it like a lasting reward that is something that no one can take away because you've earned it. It gives you a new sense of foundation for your life. So I'm going to make a prediction right now. I think Selena Gomez, once this, this changes and then we have Pluto coming into Aquarius, I'll tell you about that after this break, I think she's going to meet somebody then. I think her love life is going to transform and we're going to see a totally different side of her. So, I, and I can't wait for that. I mean, she's earned it, right? She's definitely been doing the work. Okay, let's talk more about what Saturn means for you. I'm going to give you your tips of like do's and don'ts, depending on where it is in your chart. And then we're gonna talk about the transformations of Pluto. A little more on Saturn. <laughs> I feel like it is one of the most important planets to understand. If you know what's going on for you, like with your Saturn, if you know where Saturn is in your birth chart right now, it's kind of like a secret weapon. It keeps you from getting tripped up. So uh, Riley, our fabulous producer, she actually has her birth chart pulled up. Riley, where is your Saturn? Hello. 
So my Saturn is an Aquarius. So you've been going through your solar Saturn return. So everybody out there with Saturn in Aquarius, you guys, this is like the big, the big daddy. This is the big transit for you. So Riley, have you been feeling that? I know we've talked about it a little bit, but. I have been feeling it full force. Full force. You, yes. You, you said it's the big daddy. It feels like the big daddy. <laughs> No, I've no, just it's been feeling right. like, so dragged by it all this whole time. <laughs> For three years. Yeah. For three damn years. Well, you're in good company. You, Selena Gomez, uh, my friend Alexis. I'm trying to think of, I feel like I know so many people because it's it's like it happens at a certain age range, you know? So everybody out there, if you have friends that are like late 20s uh, up to like maybe like 30, they might have this placement. Ask them. Be like, hey, where's Aquarius in your birth chart? And if they have Saturday in Aquarius you'll be like, okay, you've been going through a total life transformation. It's like a level up. So Riley, do you feel like your like your values have shifted, your outlook on life, on yourself? It's like, they call that the rite of passage. It's like when we become a real adult in astrology. I I definitely feel it. I Especially because I turned 30 this month going, you know, Ooh. early February. Um, mm -hmm. I've been definitely feeling like switching views on who I, you know, have in my life, what I want to do moving forward, my style, how I take care of myself. So I feel like a lot of things have shifted. Well, that's, that's awesome though. Like, I love that. Do you, do you feel like it was harder in the beginning and then now you kind of feel like you're coming into your own? Cause that's kind of, that's one of the ways that it, it plays out for people differently, but sometimes there'll be like a catalyst like a big event in the, like right when the transit starts. And then by the time you get to the end of it, you feel kind of like a, like an old soul, like a wise shaman in that area of your life when it comes to the self. I definitely feel like an old soul. soul. Like I've, like, I've, like, I've aged hundred years. <laughs> I feel like I've, I've seen it. I've heard it. I've done it. I've seen it all. Um, but what's so weird is I feel like I felt so secure in myself and like where I was going. And I feel like in the last couple of weeks, I've second guessed all of that and where mm. it's going. Well, so for everybody listening, that is, I want y'all to like take note of that because that's something that's going on for all of us, wherever this, uh, transit is happening for you, like whatever house it's happening in, you might have themes that come back up for review right before Saturn leaves Aquarius on March 7th. So we're literally like, we're in the home stretch. We're, we, we're running that final lap, you know? So we're like, you never know what can happen on the final lap, right? But we're just going to push ourselves through. So if you do have something that comes up that maybe reminds you of the theme like three years ago. So for me, like I said, it's about identity. So I've changed so many things. I got married. I I changed where I live. I changed, I changed my approach to my work, like literally everything. My body, like how I treat my body, how I work out, like literally everything. So there, like, I mean, I'm glad you, you brought this up, Riley, because there might be something that tries to like, you know, take us a little bit out of our um out of our strengths this week, just as like a little test. And uh, just so you know, like once you pass that last test, it's like, okay, you're solid. Saturn is, isn't going to go easy on us, you know, because it's like, like it's that loving coach. It's like, I'm going to push you so that you succeed. So yeah, if we, if we feel a little weary this week, it's all right. It's okay. We can do it. We're at the final boss. <laughs> we're in it together. <laughs> What'd you say? The final we're, at, we're at the final boss. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh my gosh. For everybody, mark March 7th on your calendar with like just big circles. And so here's the thing. When we're not super aware, and honestly, you guys, like, even though I'm really into astrology, by the way, thank you, Riley, for sharing. You're the thank best. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> um, so wherever Saturn is, like, and I did this too, you guys. I, well, I definitely did this. I was thinking I was a Sagittarius rising for the longest time. So I had no clue until this past, like, six months or, like, this little home stretch that – I have been going through Saturn in my first house. So when you don't have an awareness, it's sort of like you just feel kind of uh, kind of confused. You know, you're like, what's going on? Like, I don't understand why this is happening. You're questioning everything. And you're still going to feel a lot of those feelings, right, if you know where it is. But I feel like when you understand this is the area of my life I'm working on, this area is going to be a little bit challenging. 
Um, here are some tips. Here are some things I can do. I feel like when you have that knowledge, like it makes a huge difference. So because Saturn is always somewhere, we can figure out where it's going to go next. We're going to think ahead this time, you guys. We're going to do this together. We're going to plan ahead. So it's not going to catch us by surprise. And to find out where this is going to happen for you, you just want to pull up your birth chart. If you go to that astrocharts.com I always talk about, there is at the very end, there's going to be like a list of like, it'll say first house starts here, second house starts here. Da, 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 da. That's the list you want to look at. And we have uh, Pisces is actually going to be like the next place that Saturn moves to. So Saturn goes from Aquarius to Pisces, March 7th. So you want to look where is Pisces? So for Selena Gomez, for example, she has her eighth house starting at one degrees Pisces. So we know that now Saturn is going to move from that seventh house of partnerships where it's been for three years, and it's going to move into her eighth house of like deep bonding, other people's money, resources. The eighth house is like, it's like, it's like inheritances. It, it's like the soul connections that we have. It's, I think of it like the seventh house of partnership, but deeper. It's like the unbreakable bonds of like intimacy. It's way more psychological. And uh, it also has to do with like our power, our personal power, um, the push pull that we feel internally. So it's a really intense house, but once she's gotten that solid foundation of having that Aquarius, uh, that Saturn in the seventh house, she's going to feel so much more well-equipped. It's kind of like, it's just going to go to the next level. Do you know what I mean? So like for me, mine is going to head from, so working on the first house of like, it'll be, you know, so I've been working on like my identity da, da, da. now that that's solid, theoretically, let's hope we've solidified everything there. It's going to go into Pisces, which in my chart is my second house of finances and values. So it's like building on one another. So it's like, okay, so now I know who I am. So now Saturn moves into the house of values. Now it's time to put my money where my mouth is, so to speak. And I'm going to take everything I've learned from the first house into the second house and now approach the second house with that discipline and the energy of Saturn. So here are some things that you can think of to apply to that house that's being affected by a Saturn transit. All right. So you want to kind of assess the situation. Okay. So look at, and I like to do this with like journaling. I'm totally going to do this by the way, before the seventh. So you want to write about like your values. You want to write about that house. Like how do you approach that house? If it's partnerships for you, you might want to say, you know, write about, am I happy with my partnerships? Where do I feel like I could grow? Where do I feel like I do a really good job? Is there anything that I am unsure of? And once you kind of start writing, you know how it is. Like it just flows. Things will come out that you weren't even really aware of. And so it's like getting in touch with some of the deeper themes. And then once you have that, you've kind of assessed the situation. You've looked at that part of your life. You can start to recognize when Saturn begins to push in different directions. And you'll be able to recognize the patterns. So, you know, Saturn's job is to remind us that we have a finite amount of energy. Saturn's the planet of limitations. So you will probably be forced to prioritize a lot in that area of your life. So for me with the second house, I'm probably going to have to budget. I'm probably going to be learning more about money management, things like that. So like on the bright side, I'm excited because Saturn creates a focus in that area of your life. So like on the bright side, hopefully that means there's more money to manage. All right. That, like that could be great, but it will take a focused discipline for, um, for Selena Gomez, you know, using her as an example, that eighth house, the fact that there is a focus on deeper intimacy, I'm going to stand by, I'm going to double down on that prediction I made. I think that she's going to make some sort of deep commitment to someone and that is going to force her to really focus on that part of her life and get serious about what she wants in that area. Um, it's also been kind of funny with all the, like the drama going on, you know, with like, it's actually, it's getting kind of mean girls ish. I don't love that. It's kind of weird with like Haley and uh, Kylie and Selena, but I was checking out their birth charts because that's just what I do when there's drama. <laughs> love to look at a good dramatic birth chart. And Haley has actually had Mars in her seventh house of partnerships for the past like six months or so 
which means she's been dealing with like a lot of conflict and, you know, passion could be passion, could be a good thing, but I'm going to read this as conflict and like some difficulties in her relationship. And then Justin, he is about to enter his solar Saturn return. So when March 7th rolls around and people with their Saturn in Aquarius or major Aquarius placements get a break, people with their Saturn in Pisces, like Justin, or major Pisces placements, like if you have Pisces sun or rising, particularly, uh, that's when it's your time to now level up and grow. The focus will really be on you because Saturn is in that sign. It's in Pisces. So for him, this is going to happen all in his fifth house of creativity, dating, fun. Like the fifth house is like when you're just kind of like having a freewheeling good time. You're like in Vegas, you're doing this and that. It rules, you know, the potential for extracurricular activities of the romantic variety. I'm not going to say anything. He's a married man. I hope that none of these things like come out. But if there, if there was anything going on with Justin, like a lot of people speculate that he's cheated on Haley or whatever, rest assured that if he has done anything like that, um, it will come to light during this, this period of time for him while Saturn is in Pisces. So <sighs> we wish them the best, right? Lots to look forward to there, <laughs> but it's, it's a lot. So if you have major Aquarius placements, what I'm saying is take a sigh of relief. You can rest easy because wherever Saturn is in your chart after this, even though it's going to be somewhere in your birth chart, it's not going to be an Aquarius anymore. So it's going to lighten up exponentially. All right. When we come back, we are going to talk about what's going on with Pluto. Pluto is all about the transformation. And of course, it's also on the move in March. Speaking of transformation, whether it's Saturn or Pluto in your chart, there's always time for a good hair transformation. Nothing makes you feel better than feeling like your hair just looks shiny and fresh. And that's what I want to tell you guys about our sponsor, Vegamore. So when you look at your hair, are you 100% happy? I haven't had breakage. I'm wearing a hat right now because I need to go and get my hair colored. I actually sent a photo to my stylist. I was like, um, what's going on here? I think that we might have to move up my appointment. And she noticed it too. She said, yeah, it looks like your hair is growing faster. Like I was going to check in in three months. I think we're like at the one and a half month mark. I really do feel like I'm seeing it. And so is my hairstylist. So that just tells me my hair's not breaking and it's it's really coming in strong. With the help of Vegamore, you can get healthy, beautiful looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All their products are cruelty-free and never contain parabens or hormones. That's such a big deal. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. The Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve hair from the roots. Just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with the conditioner. It's as simple as that. And the scalp treatment, it's like a little, it, you get like this massager with it. It's very luxurious, very luxurious. So having Vegamore as my go-to shampoo and conditioner is a game changer for my overall hair health. Like, honestly, I feel like it takes care of everything. There's a serum. There's something for my scalp. There is I, these little gummies that are so cute and they're tasty, little pink hearts. It helps from the inside. It really addresses every single aspect of your hair health, makes it easy. With Vegamora, there is no risk when trying because they have a 90-day money-back guarantee. But with 91% of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with Vegamore in just three months, you won't want to run out. Get the hair you have always wanted with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash bzen and use code bzen to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash B-Z-E-N, code B-Z-E-N to save 20% at vegamore.com slash bzen. Try it out. I know you guys will love it. Now that we know how to level up with Saturn, we know that it's going to be time to put on our, our big girl and big boy pants and panties and, and just like deal with that part of our lives. Let's talk about Pluto. Pluto is another major planet that is going to affect us all collectively. And here's how you can figure out what's going to be going on for you specifically. March 23rd is when Pluto makes its move. Pluto's going to enter Aquarius. So, I, and everybody's probably like, wait, what? If you're an Aquarius, you're like, hold on. I thought I was done. I just dealt with Saturn. So here's here's what I think. Because the universe can be wild, but it's not that wild. Like, I always kind of think of the phrase, God never gives you anything you can't handle. So with this, I think the reason that it's playing out this way is because Aquarius placements have dealt with 
that discipline, like that need to kind of wake up and say like, okay, wow, I got to re redo this part of my life. I've got to grow up here. I got, I've got to get serious about this or that, depending on where it's happening for you. And then when Pluto rolls in on March 23rd, as soon as Saturn leaves, kind of gives you like the high five, like you did it. Good job. Went through the finish line. And then it's like, you've got, now it's like, there's something that's going to change in your life because Pluto is the transformer. And I really think that the hardest part, like the difficulty, the part that we kind of had to overcome, if you have those Aquarius placements, that happened during that Saturn and Aquarius transit. So I don't think it's going to be like, like a lot of people are scared of Pluto because it's like God of the underworld, like really heavy, deals with wealth, power, secrets, mystery, death. <laughs> like, so it that can seem really daunting. But on the positive side, if you've done all the work while you know, you had that Saturn transit, if you did the work, if you showed up, then now you're going to see some major transformations when it comes to your personal power. Um, you could start making more money. You could feel just like a renewed sense of self and like a renewed outlook on life in general. So if you look at where this is happening for you, again, uh, if I look at where I have Aquarius, you know, I can tell my, I can see like, okay, this is how it's going to happen for me. So wherever you have, uh, wherever you just had that solar Saturn or wherever you just had that Saturn energy, now you're going to have the Pluto energy of transformation. I say, think of this as your reward and embrace any changes that come your way. If you feel inspired to make a big change, then do it. So if we're going to talk to Selena Gomez, Selena, if you're listening, you just had that seventh house focus with Saturn. Uh, you passed the test, I'm sure. You did a great job. Now, if you want to make some big changes, like maybe say yes to a date, or you feel like you meet somebody who could have staying potential, Pluto is now in that seventh house of partnership, so things could really change. So that area of our lives is now going to go through a massive overhaul. And I think it's going to be fun to see what's changing, especially if you know now. Like, if you look at that house, you're like, okay, I know things are going to change in this part of my life, so I can embrace it it doesn't feel as like stressful, you know? All right. So we can kind of just move the energy in the way that we like work with the universe, co-creators, all that good stuff. Okay. And then we have, if you are an Aries, okay, you guys have had some really interesting things going on for you. And for the beginning part of March, let's say until like the middle of March till about like March 15th, you guys have this awesome energy of Venus and Jupiter, both in Aries. So Venus is like love, money, like just so many positive things. It's like the good vibes. It's just romance. It's beauty. Like you're looking good. You're feeling good. And then Jupiter is the giver of gifts and luck. So whereas Saturn is like the coach that gives you the discipline, uh, Jupiter is like the uncle that comes over and brings you all the presents. So <laughs> it's like you guys have a lot of fun. You're having a lot or like a lot of good things going on. So if you have like Aries, sun, moon, rising, you're probably just having the time of your life right now. Embrace it. If there's anything you need to initiate that you've been putting off or any like, I don't know if there's anything that you want to do that's kind of just like going out on a limb, do it during the beginning of March because you guys just have so much luck and anything that you do or feel you want to do, I would look at it as like a push from the universe. It's probably very, very aligned for your soul. So just like go for it, you know, lean into that Aries energy and go for it. For the rest of us, if you look at where Aries is in your chart, I'm all about looking at the houses for this. So for me, my third house starts in Aries and that's communication. So in 100%, this is what I do. I communicate. I have this. I have my television show. I did some Aries things like starting something new. So Aries is all about like starting new things. It's the entrepreneurial sign. So I'm definitely doing that in my house of communication. Um, Riley, we're just going to make you, the, we're going to pick on you today. Sorry. <laughs> That's where, okay. Where, do you know what house um, Aries is, where Aries starts? Like what house it rules for your in your chart? I What's really say. interesting is I don't have any Aries in any of my houses. Ooh. Ooh. We'd have to probably pull up a different version of your chart to know. You have your Venus in Aries though, right? Let's see. Yes, I do. Yes. Okay. So for you, hmm. Yeah. And if you have any planets in Aries, even better. So for you, Riley, you're like having a really good like transit for love, beauty. Like if there's anything that you've been wanting to go do, like if you want to like, I don't know, get a haircut or, or go on a date or like get your nails done or like anything, anything cosmetic, anything that has to do with like beauty or romance, 
these two weeks are really, really good for you. So. Ooh, okay. That's that's crazy because this weekend going into it, I tried a new nail style and like have them long and Ooh. designs, which I'm not usually, I'm usually like a short, simple girl. Oh my gosh. Yes. Venus in Aries energy right now. Are you liking it? How does the new you feel? I love it. Like, I feel like I'm more expressive with my hands and like want to show off my hands. And it just, it feels like, it feels good. I love it. Hell yes. Oh my God. I love that. So your Venus is all lit up. I would say, you know, strut around the town. See, see if, see if uh, someone comes over to you and it's like, like, that's also when like Aries placements, you guys, that is, this is when you could like have a meet cute, you know, like a rom-com style meet cute. You just like run into somebody or I don't know, like something good's going to happen. So just like, just keep I'm so up for that. For it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something good's going to happen. Just know that. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's kind of what's going on with like the major transits, just a lot of shifts, you guys. So if you start to feel like around, you know, that period from like March 7th to March 23rd, if you're feeling like, okay, a lot of things are changing, is something wrong with this? Like what's going on? Cause it can feel weird, right? Change is kind of stressful, even if it's good change, just know that this is all shifting into alignment. We're about to level up. We've just kind of closed out a bunch of lessons. So it, also if you're feeling a little tired, a little run down this week as we kind of gear up for that March 7th change, that's all right. Take it easy. Great week for self-care. Great time to just kind of chill and um, go easy on yourself, hang with some friends because this is just kind of like closing it out. There's nothing really new that's going to be happening uh, this week. And then we're just going to see what that new chapter is going to be once we have that shift. So March 7th through March 23rd, you're going to start to get a really good idea of like what's coming next for you, which is exciting. Like I love, it's like the first day of school, right? We love a fresh start. We love new energy. By the time this, these transits are done, we're so over it. Like we've, it's like, okay, I've learned all the lessons. I'm so over it. Please just like change something. So here we go. We're having a change. All right. If you guys want to pull out your calendars real quick, I just want to tell you the most like just the luckiest days to do different things. Um, I always like to do this at the beginning of the month and I want to share it with you. So like you can just circle these days. These are like lucky days. I'm going to tell you the money days and I'm going to tell you the love days. And this is generally for everybody. Okay, so the best days for love in March, Tuesday, March 7th, Saturday, March 11th, great date night, Thursday, March 30th. Okay. So these are the days, plan a date, dress up, do something fun, self-love, whatever, great days. Okay, the luckiest days in general this month. So this is really for anything. You can initiate something new, work on a project or something unexpectedly good could just happen. Uh, keep your eye on, again, March 7th, great day, March 20th and March 21st. So March 20th is actually the vernal equinox, first day of spring. And the stars are really aligned, the 20th and the 21st, for something good to happen. Really lucky aspects. So use those two days for something positive. And then the best days for money. So these are like great days, like set up a meeting, presentation. Like if there's a coworker that you don't really get along with, but you need to have some sort of talk, these are the days when like cooperation, working together, all of that will really be boosted by the stars. So Wednesday, March 15th, Friday, March 17th, Tuesday, March, let's see. I can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> Monday, March 27th, and let's see. Tuesday, March 21st. All right. So those, those are the good days for different things. Hope you commit those to memory, put it on your calendar. I will literally like, if I'm scheduling something, I'm like, oh, hold on one second. I'll like pull up my calendar and be like, okay, okay, that's a good day. Oh, and then the days to lay low. Oh my God. So important. I don't want to forget that. Couple of days to lay low. Not the astrology is not bad these days. It's just nothing really favorable. And on these days, it's just kind of like, you know, it's just kind of meh. So if you know about it, you can do extra things to make sure that you direct your day in a really positive direction, but you might not want to have like, you know, those talks or do anything that's, that could go either way. So let's see on Tuesday, March 14th and on Thursday, March 16th. So those two days, you know, nothing particularly bad, nothing to worry about, but I just wouldn't necessarily plan something. I would just kind of do your own thing those days. You know, if you're, if you're feeling like it, um, yeah, and you should be good. So that's, 
That's your cosmic calendar for March. I hope that you guys enjoy all of the shifts happening. Let me know. DM me, please. Britt Madrid at Britt Madrid. I love to hear your stories. And we still have so many more of you guys that are going to be coming on the show. So we can't wait for that. All right. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. And if you like it, please leave a review. I would love to hear from you. And be sure that you have the notifications on so that you don't miss in the cards and stars every single week. I will see you guys next Tuesday.